Anytime I find a tall jewelry box like this one, I purchase it if it's a good price. These are really fun to redo, to paint, to blend paint, add transfers. There's just so much more surface space than some of the small jewelry boxes. If you don't already have one of these little cases with these mini screwdrivers, I totally recommend getting them. They work great on jewelry, jewelry boxes and they have like a little spinny top. So it makes it really easier on your hands, which I love. Once you get all the hardware off, it's time to clean your jewelry box. I use soap and water most of the time, but every once in a while, if there's a grease mark on it or a, or a sticky place, it's good to go ahead and use like Dixie Belle's White Lightning. Um, it really just takes off the grime and it also can knock down the shine a little bit. This is what I use for the colors, the primer, and I already had it in my cabinet, so it worked out great. I'd made up these resin um, appliques a while before, and I saved them, so I pulled them out for this special occasion. They're redesigned with Prima molds, and I use amazing casting resin. It heats up really fast, and you can apply it with hot glue guns, which is cheap and effective, and it really changes the whole look of the piece, in my opinion. I'm using the Rust-Oleum Gray Primer. It really gives a nice surface base for my paint. And I usually do two coats of this and you can lightly sand in between coats if you want to reduce the brush strokes for your paint. Then I use the Merlot, the Waverly Chalk Paint and it turns into this beautiful wine purple color. And this is the first coat and I usually do two or three, but with this color, because it's darker, I did end up having to do a significant amount of coverage. So it took me about three or four coats um, before I was happy with, with how it looked. Taking my cream with a new fresh paintbrush, I get as close to the Merlot color as I can without blending them. I want to go ahead and lay down a good base coat and then I'll come back and start blending the colors together. But first of all, I wanted to make sure I got the coverage. I took this little round brush that I have and I did circular, light circular motions because you don't wanna go heavy handed or you might just take the paint off that you just laid down. So very lightly, just circular motions and then you come back with another fresh brush and just kind of feather it out. And that's how I get this nice blended look. For the sides, I really wanted to add a pretty flower transfer, so I went with a redesign with Prima 
um, design and I went ahead and put it up to just to see how I wanted this to lay on there. I recommend always doing this prior to just peeling off the back and sticking it on because sometimes you need to make sure that the placement works. Um, then you just take some scissors. Uh, I always use a good pair of scissors because these transfers, you know, you put some money into them, you don't want to mess it up. So use good scissors, slice off the parts that you want, then you peel off the back and they have a sticky part underneath. And so you put it right on there. And once you get it where you want it, then you can start smoothing it down. If you smooth it down and it's not where you want it, if you rip it up, you're going to lose your transfer and it's going to break off. So make sure you take some time and, and, and are thoughtful with this process. Once you get it on there, you go ahead and, you know, like I said, you're going to press it down. Then you're going to get your little wooden stick that comes in the transfer tube and you start rubbing it down and that's where the transfer takes place. It comes off of this paper and onto your piece. But you do have to make sure that you are diligent and you, it takes a, it takes a little bit of time to get it off there and make sure that you don't rip it up. Every time I lift the back, I check to make sure that it has adhered well and if it has it then I just keep going back and um, rubbing it down. At some point I thought, can one piece have too many transfers? No. So I decided to add these really pretty gold foil butterflies and they had these really pretty swirl and like scrolly designs. So I wanted to really bling this piece out. And so I cut out the pieces I wanted and I rubbed those on just like the transfer. Didn't have to work as hard on these um, because they just kind of come off a little bit easier. But I added these throughout and I really enjoy how it kind of added some sparkle. I always seal the paint when I'm done and I use a water-based sealant and I go over the whole piece, even the transfers, and then I do another coat. I always, rule of thumb, do two coats of sealant because I want added protection and I want to protect the, the, the work that I put into it. So I totally recommend doing two, maybe even three coats of sealer over your piece. Thank you for watching and if you haven't already, please subscribe.